Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another partner multiplayer game with Uni and Node.js. This is part 17. Uh, it's probably going to be our last part for the AI and then we're finally going to get in the databases. I know, I said it for so long. Anyways, so we're going to be doing uh, shooting today and just as a sample. Um, so we have here, we can join now and the AI is going to run at us and when it reaches um, it has a timer, so every three seconds it's going to fire at us. So it's not based on distance, it's just based on that. And then you can see that uh, we die and then we respawn. So, uh, yeah. Come check it out here in a second. Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is go to our server here. Uh, I have the game lobby open, the lobby base, and the tank AI. Uh, this is going to be the three files that we're going to be adjusting to do the shooting. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is in game lobby, we have, if I just search here on fire bullet, get rid of some of our extra parameters, it's trying to filter under. Uh, you'll notice that this kind of just works for a player, right? It doesn't really work for an AI. So the function is good as a whole, it creates a new bullet pushes it to the bullet array and has all the stats and then like does all the emitting. And that's pretty good. So we're actually gonna just like modify this a little bit to work for our AI. Uh, this is in game lobby though. And all our AI right now for updating has been in the lobby base uh, under updates. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into here and we're gonna grab everything for the AI. So that's everything up to server items. You don't need the lobby, you can just leave that for now. We'll save that. We're gonna scroll up to the top where the on update would have been called. And underneath the super, we'll paste that. And let's just reorganize things for a little bit. You can probably call the super at the top now. It's not really doing too much. You probably don't even have to call it at all, but we're just gonna to go to the top in case we decide to add functionality later. Okay, that looks pretty good. You might wanna put that into function, but uh, for now it looks pretty good. And if I hit save and run, let's just make sure that we still have some good old functionality here. You can see that the tank is rotating, moving towards us, all that goodness. And let's continue. Okay, so um, we need to modify the on fire function. So let's go back to on fire bullet. And we need to modify this in order to work with AI. So uh, the easiest way here is to have this like optional parameter uh, called is AI and we'll set that to default uh, to false for now as it's default and what that will allow is if I to save come back and play you'll notice that I can still shoot we don't wreck any of the functionality we already had cool okay so um, our AI doesn't have a connection because it's local right it's on the server uh, so this doesn't really work for us. So we need to modify this a bit. And we're assuming that the AI is going to pass proper data, right? So the data for setting the bullets and all that jazz is completely fine. Um, we're just more worried about the AI activating the function and how the data is sent to the other players. So if, if it's not AI, let's do the stuff we already have. And then if it's not AI, or sorry, if it is AI, and the lobby dot connections dot length is greater than zero, just to do checks, because we need we need some sort of connection in order to send data to everybody else. So we're just making like a quick check to make sure like somehow we didn't get like a ghost lobby and there's nobody in here and we're gonna throw errors and crash everything. Um, if you want, you can console log or firing a bullet or something. We're gonna say lobby dot connections because we know there's at least one. We're gonna say the first one. It's socket dot emit, and I'm just gonna grab this little stuff because it is basically the same. We're just kind of just rewriting in a different way. We're gonna copy this line, so that's gonna emit to connection zero, which probably player one. Uh, let's broadcast to everybody else. So 
we're going to say sockets. Uh, we're going to say this little part. So we're going to say dot broadcast dot to the lobby ID dot emit server spawn return data. And this is going to be broadcast to everyone that the AI spawn a bullet for. There's some little note here. Cool. And if we go back here and we play, uh, we're not going to notice anything because we haven't hooked up any logic, but our player can fire and all that jazz, and you know, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, so um, let's go to Tank AI and add some shooting functionality. So I don't really have a timer class. Uh, if you guys want to wrap this timer stuff in a timer class, you guys are welcome to do so. Um, and for Tiny Dungeoneers, I have a timer class that has like a callback and stuff, but. Um, I, th I feel like that's for another time. Uh, so for this, we're just gonna kind of do some shooting stuff. So the first thing is can shoot. And we're gonna set that straight to false. And then this that current time. And whenever I'm dealing with like adding numbers in time, I like to wrap it in the number class variable here. I can probably get away without it, but I've just found I, I get sometimes some wonky results. So if I'm ever doing like adding your stuff, and I'm especially around time, it's like just always a number. Um, but if you find it works for you, for you without it, um, you're welcome to not have to use it. Um, but just for me, I do it for safety sake. Okay, so we're gonna say that uh, the reload time for our guy is three seconds. And let's create, so I'm in the update here, the on update. We're gonna create some logic here to do some shooting. Okay, so if AI dot can shoot, so we have AI reference at the top here, and that's referencing the variable. So if we can shoot, uh, we're gonna have to fire a bullet and so we'll say to do fire bullet. And we're gonna say I I I I I I Captain AI dot can shoot is false. So we're gonna reset it back so it has to reload. And then just as a safety measure, you also wanna set your current time back to zero. Cause sometimes you'll forget. So if you're ever gonna like set yourself to reload, just make sure you set your counter back. All right, so if he can shoot, he's gonna fire a bullet. We'll do that in a minute. Else, uh, we're basically counting reload time. So we're gonna say ai.currentTime is equal to number of ai.currentTime. And this is like what I was saying, like if you wanna do the plus equals or do it other ways, like completely go for it. This, I just found like I've ran into multiple issues, at least with JavaScript. And this is a plus by the way where it just wasn't working too well. So you're gonna see, I'm gonna put a 0.1. And if you remember from earlier tutorials, this uh, this fires every 100 milliseconds. So that's like one tenth of a second. So um, yeah, we're gonna add uh, 0.1, 10 times that should give us a second. So we should be in there, uh, which is why we chose the 0.1. So if you have an update that fires faster than 100 milliseconds, you'll have to adjust this number for that accordingly. Okay, so if ai.currentTime is greater than or equal to ai.reloadTime, then the AI can now shoot. Beautiful. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna count to three. Uh, it's gonna set that it can shoot. Then the next like frame, quote unquote frame, uh, it's gonna come into here, fire the bullets, set it back, and then start our count all over again. Beautiful. Okay, so in order to fire the bullet, we need a function in this update here um, called on fire bullet. So I'm gonna say on fire bullet. And that's gonna be our function here that we can now call. And we're gonna pass in 
the data, like that data object. So if I go back to game lobby here, to the fire bullet, uh, we're passing in data, okay? Uh, don't worry about the other two things. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just feed the data uh, to this function that we put as a parameter and then we're gonna set the AI to true after. So we just need the data. So the data needs an activator, position, and a direction. Um, so the activator is the ID of it. So we're gonna say uh, activator is AI.ID, that's so it doesn't shoot itself. The position is going to be equal to the AI.position.json data. And direction is beautiful because we actually have it right here. And we even have a better version, the normalized version, which is what we want. We want the normalized version, uh, which is just direction. So we can just say direction, JSON data, and do that. So this is going to call the unfire. And if we were to run this right now, it'd probably break. So what we're going to do is because we don't pass in the unfire bullet for here. So we're going to scroll back up to the top here to our update. To where we have our list, we go all through. Um, I'm going to click this little uh, curly brace here so I know where it ends. And you can see that it uh, is wrapped in this guy here. Uh, so then, okay. So then we're gonna add another function. So we're gonna put a comma here. And we're gonna say this is gonna take in some data, right? And then we're gonna have another function. So go back to tank AI. You'll see I called fire bullet and I passed in an object with some data. So that's gonna come through as data. What are they going to say? Lobby dot on fire bullet. So that's the one that we have down below. Connection, we're just going to put undefined. So we're not going to use it. We're going to pass in the data that we are given and we're going to set this to true. And if all those steps are completed, we should now be able to go into the game. We'll join, we'll go one, two, three, when we get shot. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Beautiful. If I kind of, well, that's like a homing missile. missile on that one. And we should see we have a lot of, uh, of debugs so let's close this for now. We'll come back into the debug. Let's go into tank AI. And just kind of comment this guy out here. We don't uh, really need it. See where we're going. Okay, so let's see. So he's gonna fire a bullet at us. And it's destroying the bullet. And it's not applying damage. So let's fix that. Should have an on update bullet. Here. So we have bullet.update. Using its speed, its direction is destroyed. Okay. So 
Let's go back to the top here. Let's see what we're missing. Okay, so I'm going to be back right in a second here. Uh, I'm going to go look through and find out what we're missing, and then I'll come back and we'll fix the bullet. All right, guys, went and had a look. Um, sorry about that. My last time when I filmed part 16, I used a different project uh, for some reason. Uh, so I went ahead and figured out what uh, what we changed in part 16 that was different in my current version. Um, and as you can see now, the player gets destroyed by the tank. And we'll see, just watch it uh, hit. And we get destroyed, we respawn, all that jazz. And what I did here was in part 16, you should have this changed already. This was more of just like a my error. But in case you don't, in the enemy prefab, we changed the radius from 0.5 to 0.3. And that's what was causing our issues here. Um, so just go ahead and make sure that you are changing it 2.3 in the enemy AI for the radius for the circle collider. And then you should be okay and be able to watch the AI shoot. And you'll notice that uh, if I roam around, the AI is slightly behind me, right? So it maybe as a homework assignment, you guys could be like, kind of like overshooting your aiming. Uh, do that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, just improve the AI. Take the logic we have, improve the AI how you'd like. This is more just a sample of how you might apply AI um, I use a very similar technique in Tiny Engineers to do all the AI for all my different creatures and bosses and all that jazz. Um, so hopefully it should apply for your game. Uh, our next tutorial is going to be on databases, and I think a lot of people are super excited for that. Uh, so yeah, make sure you guys uh, comment below, leave a like, share it, share the video. We need more people to look at this stuff. Uh, share the first video, and we'll see you guys uh, next time. As always, have a good one. Hey guys, I just wanted to make sure that I give a nice shout out to all my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, and they're going to be in the following list for you. Arthur Zhang. ARVR2020. Timothy McCoon. Hey everyone, if you guys liked the video, make sure you guys click that subscribe button, give it a like, and make sure to comment. It really helps out. And if you guys are looking to support the project further, I also have my Patreon, which will be linked in the description down below. Thank you, and have a good day.